back to church. That's right. Back to church. Back to church. We're going to be on this series this whole month of June. God is going to help us. It's all about understanding that even in the midst of a pandemic, the church has to move on. Even in the midst of a pandemic, God still has something to do with his church. And you're going to be blessed by this series mightily. So we're going to go straight into the word of the Lord this morning. The first thing I want to make you aware of this morning before we go any further is that there is nothing new under the sun. There is absolutely nothing new under the sun. I know the name coronavirus maybe is the first time we heard such a name and such a virus. But as far as pestilences and as far as uh, pandemic and as far as viruses are concerned, this is not the first time. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9, history merely repeats itself. It has all been done before. Nothing under the sun is truly new. Nothing under the sun is truly new, including the lockdown we are going through right now. The Bible says history merely repeats itself. So if you go through our history, you'll find out that this is not the first time the world has gone through a lockdown. And this is not the first time we've experienced a pandemic. And this is not the first time churches and businesses have had to close down. It's when you are not a, a student of history that you will think that this is happening. It is the first time for us, our generation, we've had never had something like this before. But there is nothing new under the sun. So what is a surprise to you and me is actually old news for heaven. Meaning God has already gone through something like that before and heaven is aware of it. And that is my encouragement this morning is that whatever you are going through, always remember no matter what Satan tells you, especially that you are the first to go through it, never believe it. Because the Bible says there is nothing new under the sun. Whatever you are going through, somebody else has gone through it before you. Or it has happened before it happened to you. And if you can just go back and check, you will realize that if they overcame, you too can overcome in the name of Jesus. Praise God. So when we realize that there is nothing new under the sun, meaning coronavirus is nothing new, it, what I want you to, make, uh, to be aware of is that if there is nothing new under the sun, it means you don't have to die from anything that you are going through. The key to survive is to adapt. Adaptability is the key to survival. This is how uh, Paul puts it in the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 12. He says, I know how to live in almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. Paul says, I know how to live in almost nothing. And I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation. What that means is that there is a secret in every situation you are going through. There is a secret way to live in every situation. And I'm sure you have seen how your church, ABC, has survived this situation of a lockdown by learning a new way of doing church. We didn't sit down and say, we're going to wait until the, churches, the church buildings reopen for us to be able to have church. We adapted our system with church online. We've had to learn to connect every Sunday morning, just like you are doing this morning. I'm in the church building where I usually meet you with, but you are not here with me. You are right in your house, but you are connected with me because we have learned to adapt. Hallelujah. And what I want you to learn this morning is that if you can learn to adapt, you will survive a thousand times. If you can learn to find another way of doing the same thing you are doing, you will survive when other people are going down. And that is my prayer for you. Many, many, many people right now are struggling. Or some are excited because at least today, churches have been allowed to reopen. But how about those that have had only the chance to see their pastor the last time in April? And today, this morning is the first time they get to see their pastor again. Because they could not adapt to technology. I'm glad that God has blessed us with a church 
that can adapt to the times and the circumstances. And my prayer for you is that even as an individual, you too will be able to adapt to the times and the circumstances. So I've got seven lessons that I believe this, this lockdown has taught me personally. You know, when we talk about adapting, I've seen seven things that this lockdown has taught us. Number one, we can live without certain things. In these past three months or two months and a few days or a few weeks, I have learned the lockdown has taught me that I can live without certain things. We have all realized that certain things that seem to be so important are not that so important. Some of you, were man you managed to survive without KFC. Did you die? No. <laughs> Some of you managed to survive without chicken licking. Did you die? You didn't die. Praise God. And many people discovered through this lockdown that you can survive not smoking. Smoking, cigarettes were not allowed to be so, so even the highest smokers had to survive. You didn't die. I didn't, be, I didn't hear that one person died because they couldn't smoke. Many people survived not drinking. Alcohol was not allowed. Nobody that rather people saved money. So the lockdown has taught me that I can survive without certain things. And I believe you can agree with me this morning. That certain things that always speak such a loud voice, they, they, they speak so loud to our ears. This lockdown has shown me they are not that precious and they are not that necessary. Number two, you can live without certain people. I'm sure you've also discovered through this lockdown that your boyfriend is not as precious and as important as you thought he was. Some of you that used to say, I cannot live one day without you. Hello. You have survived three months without him. Three months without him, you are still alive. It is a message to you <laughs> that you can live without certain people, my friend. You can live. It is not the end of the world. If there are no more in your life, you can survive. You are a survivor. Paul says, I have learned to live in every circumstances. I have learned the secret of adapting myself to all kinds of circumstances. Another thing that I have learned in this lockdown is that the world will not disappear because you didn't go to work. Yeah. Those of us that made our jobs our idols was as if your job is everything. My job is everything to me. You have now discovered that you can be at home for three months and the world will not fall apart. Yeah. That is a big discovery I have made. That things will not die just because I'm in the house. The day I came out of the house, things were still moving, you know. They had not stopped. The sun didn't stop shining because I was in the house. No. Everything continued just normal. And you see, it has given us a taste of death. Because when you, when you and I leave this world, I'm telling you, nothing will stop. Things will just continue flowing. That's why the Bible says, what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Because after you have gained the whole world, you're going to lose the world, and you're going to go down and lose your soul as well, and the world will continue. When you go down, you are not going down with the world. So even the world you have gained, you will still leave behind. That is something I have learned in this lockdown. That a whole lot of things can continue. Even if you and I don't even go to church. Church can continue. We have been able to continue with church. Church didn't stop. It didn't stop. Number four. I have learned in this lockdown that family is important. I promise you. I did not realize how important my family was until I found myself locked in with them Every single day. And talking about family, I've also, you will also agree with me that you've discovered that your siblings are not as bad as you thought they were. Eh? <laughs> Some of you who used to think that your elder brother is such a useless person, now that you have had to be with him for three months, you've discovered that he can also be good company, you know, just in passing. And you've discovered that your parents are not as bad as you thought they were. Ah, they can talk with you. 
I find myself playing tennis with my son. And he discovered that his father can play tennis, even if I can't fight against Bonat and, uh, Rafael Nadal and all of those guys. But I can hit my small ball there, you know, small, small. So your family is important. Why? Because when you find yourself in the lockdown, you are not locked down at work. You are not locked down in your job. You are not even locked down in the church building. You are locked down in your house with your family. That tells you that family is important. And we must value family. Because they were with you for three months. Or they are still with you. Actually, what am I saying? Many of them are still with you. Those of us that haven't gone back to work. They are still with you. I haven't seen my colleagues for three months. But I see my family every day. I haven't seen some of you for a very long time. But I see my family every day. So it shows you that your family is important. Hallelujah. Number five. I've learned also that God is no longer essential in our society. I didn't know that God was not essential. And I know some of you will say, but pastor, they, we didn't say God is not essential. We just say that for a while, church was not essential. No, God is represented on earth by the church. And for the, so for the mere fact that we had gone, to, we needed to come to level three and we needed to appeal for the church to be allowed to open, it shows us that the place that God has in our society is not as important and as essential as we thought it was. I didn't know that myself. Until the lockdown came to reveal to us that the church is not viewed as an essential service. It says a lot about God and the place, and the place that we put God in our society. It says a whole lot. My prayer is that through this lockdown, we will rediscover that God is not one of the things that are important in our life. God is the most important person in our life. The Bible says, seek first. Seek first. You shall have no other God beside the Lord your God. But in our society today, so many other gods can come ahead of him. That is what I have discovered in this lockdown. And I believe that you are also seeing the same thing. You are also seeing the same thing. Number six, I've discovered that my ABC family is an integral part of my life. This church, ABC, I didn't realize the place that ABC was playing in my life until I found myself in this lockdown. You know, sometimes you need to lose something to realize how precious it is to you. I didn't realize that going to church every Sunday morning was that important until I couldn't go anymore. I didn't realize that not seeing my brothers and sisters every single time or every single week was that important. I didn't know. So I realized that ABC or any other church that you are a part of, if you are watching from another church, any church you are a part of, church is an integral part of our lives. And that's why some people could not take it anymore. They started demonstrating and saying, the church must be Essential, because it's an essential part of our lives. Hallelujah. Then the last lesson I have learned, I have learned in this lockdown that it is hard to become a strong Christian without fellowship. It's very hard. And I'm sure you will agree with me right at home that things are not the same ever since we, you enter that house. Yeah. Your Christianity, many people, their Christianity is no more working. Simply because they have been cut from fellowship. Fellowship is very important. Our Ida star says Sunday morning, I want to be a strong Christian who loves the Lord with all my heart. And you will notice that some people, the love of God, which we have been teaching the whole three months, the love of God has grown cold. Because of what? Not because those people don't love God, but there are other influences. And let me tell you something. I thank God for church online, but church online can never, ever replace church on ground. Church online can never, ever replace fellowship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.